Hi everyone, Exotic PC here. Thanks for taking the time to check out another one of our video reviews. Today we have the MSI GT80 Titan SLI-263. This is a 18.4 inch full high def screen, so that's 1920 by 1080. For the CPU, we have Intel's fifth generation Broadwell i7-5950HQ, which works from 2.9 to 3.7 gigahertz. For the video cards, we have dual NVIDIA GTX 980M, so there's two of them in there. They are in SLI. They're the 8 gig versions each, so there's a total of 16 gigabytes of video RAM on here. For system RAM, it comes pre-installed with 24 gigabytes. That's 1600 megahertz, and it is upgradable to 32 gigs. For your uh, hard drives, we have two 128 gigabyte M.2s, which are in RAID, and it can support up to four of those and 512 gigabytes each. There's also a one terabyte hard disk drive in there for your storage. It comes standard with a Blu-ray burner. Of course, that will do DVD and CDs. For the wireless card, we have the Bigfoot 1525AC, Windows 8.1's pre-installed. You have a two-year US warranty on there with one-year accidental damage protection. One-year global warranty on there as well, but no accidental damage for the global. For the sides, we're looking at 17.95 inches across. 13.02 inches deep and 1.93 inches thick. Uh, weighing in 9.9 .9 pounds, that is including the battery. So it's a bigger computer, uh, but you kind of expect that once you know what you're looking into. So uh, let's get into the, some more of the specs. Let's take a look at the screen viewing angles. We have our usual colorful gradient here as the background. Sitting straight in front of us, again, this is a 1920 by 1080 resolution, so I'll spin it off to the left and the right, and really what we're looking for is any type of color shift on there. And as you can see, as we go to the left, we really don't lose a whole lot on there, so it's holding that wide viewing angle really well, going off to the right, and like usual, I'll tell you if I see anything different in person than I do on the camera. But no, you can see the color does hold very well there. And Norton wants us to activate it. Let me close that. Sorry about that. Now let's go ahead and lean it forward. So I'll close it all the way here until basically the screen sh thinks we're going to close it and it'll shut off. You can see we're losing focus there, but the color shift is right. Let's get that focus back on. Here we go. Until right around there. So the screen's still on. I'll slowly raise that and hopefully we can get some of that focus back in. There we go. So really no color shift leaning forward. I'll go ahead and lean it back. And that's as far back as it's going to go. So really good viewing angles on here. So it's an excellent screen, uh, you know, kind of expected for a flagship computer like this GT80. We're going to put some really nice components in it. Let's take a look at the keyboard. Uh, the really cool thing about this, it is a built-in mechanical keyboard. It uses the Cherry MX switches, uh, Cherry MX brown switches, I should say. And as you can see, it's a red backlight on there. So the keyboard is made by Steel Series, but you can't change the color. So it's always going to be red. You'll see the stand that it's on here. That is not going to be included with it. So you don't have a regular area where your wrist would rest, uh, but they do include this wrist rest uh, with it. So this is going to be in the box. It's a nice gel one, so it would be nice and comfortable on there. Um, for the keyboard sound itself, kind of anything that you would expect from a mechanical keyboard, it's going to have that little clickety sound, but the brown switches are nice, uh, so they're not real loud, but they still get you that nice uh, tactile feel on there and good feedback. For flex itself, it's a really solid keyboard, and it's not going to flex anywhere. Uh, I'll show you when we pop open the bottom, you'll see the bottom uh, underneath of the keyboard and how it's nice and solidly built there. The lights itself, they can be turned on and off. So if you don't want that red light on there, you can turn that off. But again, you can uh, not adjust the color of it. Now, normally you would have your touchpad down over here and you'll see it off to the right here. So this is the touchpad. 
and it's also the number pad too. So you hit the top left there and it's gonna change and it's gonna, the, the numbers light up. So depending on what you wanna do, you can just hit that. You got your left click and right click right there. Uh, but for a keyboard, uh, I really like it. I'm used to a mechanical keyboard. If you are used to one, you're gonna be happy with this. And if you're not used to one, you're gonna get addicted to them after you start using a mechanical keyboard here. Let's have a quick look at the back exterior finish here. You can see it is a brushed metal on there. You got the MSI logo right there and then their gaming dragon emblem right on it as well. Now that is backlit. Not sure if you can tell or not, but that is a white light on the dragon. And then you see the left and right red decals. Those are also lit as well. So if we turned off the lights, they would give you a slight glow, not really, really bright. Uh, but if it was dark, you definitely would see them glow a little bit. I think you can pick that up as well. well. Let's take a look at the ports on the computer. We're going to start on the back left hand side. You can see an exhaust vent right there, followed by your Kensington lock, and then right above that is your optical drive. So your Blu-ray burner, CD, DVD is all right there. You get your memory card reader for your secure digital. And then there's three USB 3.0 ports. And then you've got your optical out. Then you have your audio right there. So you have a, on the left-hand side is your headphones. The right-hand side is your microphone. So that's the left side. Let's go up to the front. And we're going to find three status indicator lights there. The first one is your Wi-Fi. Trying to get those in focus for you. Uh, the second one is your AC adapter. It's a, it's a battery logo on there. If our AC adapter was plugged in, then that would be lit up. And then on the right is your hard drive status indicator. So anytime there's read write to the hard drive, you'll see that blink at you, just like that there. Spin it off to the right hand side. You're going to have two more USB 3.0 ports and the right hand side exhaust port. There's also exhaust on the back. So you'll see that on the left. There's two mini display ports, an HDMI, power, and your ethernet. And then finishing it off on the right-hand side, that's just a right rear exhaust port. And right at the back left as where we started off. So that covers the ports and the status indicator lights for you. BIOS. Let's jump into the BIOS and show you what's in the menus here. The computer's completely off. I'll turn it on and I'll just spam delete. then it'll get you into the bio. So on the main page, we have our system date, system time, system language, storage information, which is just going to show you the uh, hard drives installed, so two SSDs and a regular hard disk drive, and then the system information, which shows you your BIOS version, EC version, and the hardware installed, like your CPU and your RAM. Going over to the advanced tab, I'll just go over what's here. We got your PCI latency timer, SATA mode selection is set to RAID because we have two SSDs in RAID. Intel Speed Step Technology, Supercharger, ERP Lot 3 support, Wake Up on LAN S5 support, the Windows and Function Key Swap. So that's your Windows key and your Function key. A lot of people don't like when one's on the other side, and you can actually swap them out. The Network Stack, Intel Virtualization Technology, USB configuration, and we can get in there. It's really just a legacy USB support that anybody would really jump in on there. UEFI BIOS update and the Intel Rapid Storage technology. Next tab is your boot. So you can have your numbers on or off, fast boot enabled, disabled, boot mode selection, and then your boot priority. So um, your optical drive, uh, hard drives, network, however you want to change those around. Security, where you can set your admin password, user password, and secure boot menu. And then we can save and exit here. So I'll go ahead and discard changes and exit. I don't think I changed anything, but we'll do that. And then once you do that, it'll just boot into Windows like normal. We're going to take a look at the boot time on here. Again, this is two 128 gigabyte M.2 SSDs in RAID 0 or Super RAID 3, as MSI calls it. I have my phone set up here. So what I'm going to do, it's uh, on my stopwatch. The computer is completely off. I'll hit start and power at the same time. And I'll do my best to stop it once we get to the desktop. So we'll go three, two, one, start. We should see some pretty good times on there. We'll find out. Oh, 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 
can stop it. Sorry about that. It was about 12 seconds if you saw that. Actually, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. But it was 12 seconds uh, to get to the desktop. That can even be increased a little bit more if you uh, added a couple more SSDs into there. All right, guys, it's time to take a look at some benchmarks. We're going to start off with 3D Mark Fire Strike. Uh, as you can see, we have our decibel meter set off to the left exhaust port, and that's going to really listen for the fans to ramp up as the benchmark starts putting stress on the components. I'll put the microphone down over there, too, so you can hear the fans kick up. And like usual, we will be overlaying our FLIR images so you can see where the heat's being generated and dissipated. And, of course, once it's all done, we'll go over numbers. Let's take a look at 3D Mark Fire Strike and the scores that we got here. As you see right in the middle, 13,663. We're seeing a graphics score of 18,877. Again, that's with dual GTX 980Ms. The physics score is where we're going to see the biggest bump compared to the last GT80 that we did because of the CPU. So right here we're at 11,251 and then a combined score of 4,969. Of course temperatures are going to be important so we, we're monitoring those. Here's the CPU temps, upper 80s, lower 90s, so 88 to 91. And let's take a look at the GPU here. So we got 65C on one of them. And then down a little bit further, 72C on the other. So uh, definitely good temperatures. We could see a little bit lower temperatures on the CPU, maybe a, a repaste, uh, some better thermal compound. Typically can shave off a few degrees there. Um, nothing to worry about overheating issues, but, uh, you know, as always, the lower temperatures, the better. But results, definitely nice and uh, right where we like to see them. We've got our second benchmark. This is 3D Mark Skydiver. That's all finished up here. A score of 30,067. Graphic score, 58,303. A physics score, 9,555. And a combined score of 21,295. Again, temperatures. Let's take a look at those. So we're looking at a little bit higher on the CPU. So 92, 94, 95. And then let's scroll down to the GPU and take a look at those past them here so 74 on one of them and let's see the other one I think is right up here yep 67 on the other so higher than 3d mark fire strike uh, nothing dangerous but uh, could be a little bit lower definitely um, we'll do one more benchmark and it'll be 3d mark 11 and we'll we'll see how those numbers turn out Okay, our last benchmark, 3D Mark 11, is all finished up here. We got a P17,483. We're seeing a graphic score of 24,166. Physics score, 9,640, with a combined score, 9,434. So let's look at the temperatures here. This is pretty similar to what we saw on Skydiver. So we're looking at the lower 90s here, 91 up to 94. And take a look at the GPU temperatures here. We got 65 on one of them and 71 on the other one. So the GPU temperatures are great. CPU could be a little bit lower. Uh, it's a very high performance CPU though. Uh, it's the 5950HQ, so uh, one of the top mobile CPUs that are uh, going to be for the, um, the Broadwell chipset here.
ran a test on the hard drives here. There's two 128 gigabyte M.2s and MSI Super RAID 3. So you can see the speed increase that you get for having those SSDs in a RAID configuration. Uh, your sequential read times over a gigabyte per second, so 1,052 megabytes per second. All right, also very fast, uh, 903.4. And then our 4K numbers here uh, are read in megabytes per second, 22.14 and then write 72.93. You can also see the 5, 12K speeds and the 4K QD 32 speeds there. So all good numbers. Uh, and again, this has room for two more slots that you can add to that rate configuration and even get higher numbers than that. Let's pop open the bottom and take a look at the internals of the computer. You're going to have to undo some screws here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, so on, just around the perimeter there. There's one special one here and a second special one here. And you're going to see a little uh, engraving on there that's going to show RAM and a hard drive sign. So these two just need to be removed. You're going to open up the other side of it, which I'll go over in just a minute. So once I've, you've undone those screws, you can go ahead and start to pop open the bottom. And right here is usually a good spot. There we go. And there are little plastic clips that go around it. So just kind of be careful as you're doing that, but they will pop up. Might have missed a screw here. Let's see. There we go. Once you've gotten all the screws out properly, then it lifts up pretty easy. So on the bottom here, this is the bottom of the, uh, the keyboard. So it's really solid, and that's kind of what I was talking about when I was going over the, the keyboard before. So it's a mechanical keyboard, and that's one of the reasons why there's really no flex on it. And then we have our RAM slot here. There's two of them on the bottom. There's also two on the other side. We've got our battery pack right here. So it's a small one, but a uh, beast like this, you're not going to be running on battery very often. Uh, to take advantage of you know the full power that it can do you're going to want it plugged in got our um, it looks like uh, the left side but since it's upside down this is the right side exhaust we got our heat transfer pipes here and there's a gpu under here got another heat transfer pipe here there's the cpu here and the other gpu over here so again there's dual video cards in here with the cpu in the middle heat transfer pipes going off to the vents off to the side so there's a rear exhaust and a side also rear and a side on both of them there you got the subwoofer here and that looks like it's going to cover really most of the parts on the bottom of it so uh, again those two screws i was talking about if you're going to open up just the other side we'll flip it back over here open this up and then this panel just slides over and then up and once you've done that, then we have access to the other components. So let me move this up here. So what you see here are two of the M.2 SSDs. There's a third slot here and a fourth slot over here. You got the other RAM right in here. So there's now the RAM slot. There's an open one. This particular model comes with 24 gigs installed. It can support up to 32. So four RAM slots in there. Optical drive right here. Got your speakers here, and then your regular hard drive right there. So that covers the internals of it pretty well. Uh, pretty easy to upgrade yourself. You know, if you're comfortable doing it, you can put take that out, put an SSD, add more M.2s. And of course, it is something that we can do for you before we ship it out to you as well. Okay, that's going to finish up our look at the MSI GT80 Titan SLI-263. Hope you got some good information on there. If you have any questions, always contact us. The toll-free phone number, 1-877-289-9684. You can email sales at exoticpc.com or reach us at our live chat. And uh, we're available on there from 9 to 5.30 Central Time, Monday through Friday. Of course, check out our website. It's Exotic PC. That's www.xoticpc.com. And if you like the video, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Any comments or questions, just leave them be below and we'll do our best to answer them. All right. Thanks. Until next time.